Hi, my name is Yacha Jemfi. I'm one of the nurse practitioners at the Cohen Veteran Center. And I'm today I will be demonstrating how to do a physical exam along with the focused neurological assessment. Hi, nice to meet you. You should be doing an overall assessment of the participant from the minute they walk in. Assessing their appearance, noting if there is any fragility or any tremors, noting their gait, if they're using any assistive devices, etc. Prior to auscultating the heart and lungs, we assume that hand hygiene was performed and vital signs were taken. Just looking at your head, and I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna just feel um, the area. Okay, I'm palpating your head. At this point, we are examining the HEENT systems. A portion of this part of the exam will overlap with the neurological assessment. For the head, you'll be inspecting the scalp, hair, and cranium to assess for any abnormalities. Just to note that it's smooth, no abnormalities. Good. Now I'm going to just um, feel your lymph node area or your neck if there's any tenderness. Palpate the cervical lymph nodes to assess for any tenderness. Now you will palpate the trachea to ensure that it is midline. Afterward, you will palpate the thyroid to ensure smoothness. Good. Now I'm going to just check your thyroid gland, okay? So I'm just feeling. Good. I'm going to ask you now, I'm going to take a look inside your mouth, but first I'm going to ask you to stick your tongue straight out for me. Ask the participant to stick out their tongue. This will assess cranial nerve number 12. You want to ensure that the tongue is midline and there is no wasting or tremors. You will also examine the mobility of the uvula to determine the function of cranial nerve number 9 as the participant opens his or her mouth and says ah or yawns. The uvula and soft palate should rise in the midline. Straight and now move it from one side and the other. Good. Now I'm going to use this tongue blade. I'm going to ask you to open up a little wider. I'm going to depress your tongue and say ah for me. Uh, Very good. So I'm just taking a look at my ear. Any tenderness when I touch? No. Okay. Not. Next, examine the ears. Inspect the oracle and push the tragus to assess for tenderness. Using an otoscope, inspect the canal tympanic membrane and the integrity of the ear. To assess cranial nerve number eight, perform the whispered voice test. If there is suspicion of hearing loss, perform the Weber and Renee tests. Please refer to your SOP for explanations on how to perform these tests. Good. Any tenderness when I touch? Now I'm going to occlude one ear and then I'm going to whisper a common two syllable phrase. I want you to tell me what you heard, okay? Apple. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday. Good. Now I'm going to ask you to just follow my finger with just my, with just your eyes alone. Keep your head straight. Inspect the eyes. Test visual fields by confrontation, which is also cranial nerve number two. You will also test extraocular muscles, which incorporates cranial nerves number three, 
4, and 6. Then inspect the external ocular structures. After this point, darken the room and use the ophthalmoscope to inspect the ocular fundus. Test pupillary responses to light and accommodation. Very good. So now, David, I'm going to take a look in your eyes with this um, ophthalmoscope. So first, if you don't mind removing your glasses for me, I'm going to just take a look first and just check your ocular structures. I'm going to pull down here, just check your square up. Now I'm going to dim the light. I would like you to just look straight ahead, focus there, and then I'm going to use this ophthalmoscope. light so now I'm going to use a pen light still looking straight ahead I'm just going to shine this light into your eye one at a time I'm checking to see that your pupil is constricting and then I'm checking now to see if the other one is consensual I'm going to do the same here good I want you to just take a look up for me I'm just checking inspecting the mirrors inspect the external nose for symmetry and lesions Using a light source, inspect the nares. Inquire about any trouble with sense of smell. Perform cranial nerve number one testing for those who report trouble. Please refer to your SOP for explanations on how to perform this test. Very good, you can look down again. Any trouble with your sense of smell? No, okay. So now I'm gonna just use this um, reflex hammer to test some of your reflexes, okay? okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull your arm out this way. I'm going to rest my hand here and I'm going to just. Now you will assess the deep tendon reflexes for the biceps, triceps, patelli, and Achilles. Strike the reflex hammer on the bicep tendon and your thumb is supposed to be that good. We'll do the same here. Now what I'm going to do is check the tricep, so I want your lip bend to be just as um, relaxed as possible. Okay. Now you can put your arm down. I'm going to check your patella reflex. And then we'll assume that if you don't mind just pulling your feet down just a little and I'm gonna just get your ankle. To assess cranial nerve number eleven, you will examine the sternomastoid and trapezius for equal size. Check equal strength by asking the participant to shrug their shoulders against resistance and rotate their head forcibly against resistance applied to the side of the chin. These movements should feel equally strong on both sides. Okay. Now I'm going to put my hand down on the side of your cheek and I want you to turn towards my hand to resist, okay? Good. Good. Stronger. On the other side too. So now we're going to test your motor strength. I'm going to ask you to grip my hands equally and firmly as you can. Test the power of homologous muscles simultaneously. Test the muscle groups of extremities and know any asymmetry. Okay, good. Now you can let go. Now what I'm going to do, ask you to do is go like this. And I'm going to push again. And I want you to try to resist me, okay? Now I'm going to pull, I want you to try to not let me go. Now I'm going to ask you if you don't mind just to move your right leg up a little and I'm going to push down, try to not let me push down. Okay. Same here, lift your left leg up a little and I'm 
just gonna try to push down and do resistance. Great. And then we'll do the same with the feet. Just gonna put on some brush just because I'm gonna touch the soles of your shoes. So first I'm gonna ask you to flex towards your body with both. Good. Now I'm gonna ask you to push down like you're pushing a pedal. Very good. So now I'm gonna test some of your facial nerves. So I'm gonna ask you first, if you don't mind, to show me your teeth. To test cranial nerve number seven, assess motor function by noting mobility and facial symmetry as the participant responds to your request, such as to smile, frown, lift their eyebrows, and puff out their cheeks. Or smile, good. Now frown, puff out your cheeks. Okay, let go at the same time, good. Raise your eyebrow up and down one time for me. Okay, good. So now I'm going to place my fingers on both sides of your jaw. I want you to clench your jaw for me. For cranial nerve number five, you will be testing motor and sensory functions. For motor function, assess the muscles of mastication by palpating the temporal and masseter muscles as the participant clenches their teeth and moves their jaw side to side. Muscles should feel equally strong on both sides. For sensory function, with the participant's eyes closed, test light touch sensation by touching a cotton ball to the forehead, cheeks, and chin. Ask the participant to say now whenever the touch is felt. Now move it side to side. Very good. For the sensory test, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to place this cotton ball on the three areas of your face. I want you to just say now when you feel it, okay? Ready? No. 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 Good. So now, this is a test for coordination. What I want you to do for this test is you're going to uh, stretch your arms like this, and um, you're going to touch the tip of your nose with your index finger and then alternate. Okay, ready? Go. To test coordination and skilled movements, you will perform the finger to nose test and the rapid alternating movements test. For finger to nose, ask the participant to close their eyes and stretch out their arms. Ask them to touch the tip of their nose with each index finger, alternating hands and increasing speed. Normally, this is done with accurate and smooth movement. For rapid alternating movements, ask the participant to pat their knees with both hands, lift up, turn hands over, and pat their knees with the backs of their hands. Then ask the person to do this faster. Normally, this is done with equal turning and quick rhythmic pace. Eyes closed. Okay, can you go a little faster? Very good. Okay, you can open up. So now another, you can put your arms down. So now another coordination test is called rapid alternating hand movement, where you tap the tops of your knees and then you flip it over. You do that a couple times, go as fast as you can as well for me. Very good, perfect. All right, so now it's another sensory test. Um, it's gonna require you to have your eyes closed and I'm gonna place an object in the palm of your hand. I want you to tell me what you think that object is by just feeling and not seeing. For stereognosis, you will test the participant's ability to recognize objects by feeling the object's form, size, shape, and weight. With the participant's eyes closed, place a familiar object, such as a paperclip, key, or coin in their hand and ask them to identify it. Test a different object in each hand. Normally, the participant should be able to name the object correctly. Paperclip. Yep, very good. Now I'm going to place another object in your hand. I'll take this one up. What do you think that is? Cotton ball. Good. All right. So now I'm going to trace, with your eyes still closed, I'm going to trace the number in the palm of your hand. I want you to tell me what number you think I traced. To test graphesthesia, with the participant's eyes closed, use a blunt instrument such as a pen to trace a single digit number or letter on one palm. Ask the participant to tell you what you have traced. Three. Good. Another test with your eyes closed. I'm going to move your finger, your thumb, in the direction up or down. This means up, this means down. I want you to tell me which way I'm going, okay?
Test for reception by moving a finger up and down and ask the participant to tell you which way the finger is moved. The test is done with eyes closed, but be sure the directions are understood. Have the participant undergo a few trials first. Vary the order of the movement up or down. Hold the digit by the sides since upward or downward pressure on the skin may provide a clue as to how the finger is being moved. Up, down, up. So I'm going to ask you if you don't mind walking the length of this room and returning normal stride. Observe the participant's gait as they walk 10 to 20 feet, turn and return to the starting point. Normally the participant moves with a sense of freedom and the gait is smooth, rhythmic, and effortless. The opposing arm swing should be coordinated and the turns smooth. Now I'm going to ask you to walk with one foot in front of the other in a heel to toe fashion, straight line. To test tandem walking, ask the participant to walk a straight line in a heel to toe fashion. This decreases the base support and will accentuate any problem with coordination. Normally the participant can walk in a straight line and stay balanced. Very good. So now I want you to just stand just where you are, hands at your sides, feet together. And I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes for about 10 to 15 seconds. And I'll just be right near you in case of any Ready? Go. For the Romberg test, ask the participant to stand with feet together with their arms at their sides. Once stable, ask them to close their eyes and hold the position for about 20 seconds. Normally a person can maintain posture and balance for this period of time even with visual orienting information blocked, although some swaying may occur. Be sure to stand close so you can catch the participant if they fall. Thank you for watching this demonstration video. Please be sure to assess exposed areas of skin and muscle tone throughout the exam. The order of the exam may vary and you may tailor it as you see fit.